Welcome to another James Kelly tutorial. This time, we're going to build a beer advert. Now let me show you how. Now. How. Now. Did that look any good? Hope so. I haven't even made it yet, so I don't know what it's gonna turn out like, but you have already seen it. Now, what we're gonna do is go through how we created the thing that I haven't created yet. I'm gonna take this can of beer. Thanks. Is it Lidl or Aldi? Aldi, Aldi, Aldi. Don't know how you say it, and I get, I get the two of them mixed up, Lidl and Aldi. But thank you, Aldi, for supplying this IPA. It's quite tasty. Um, it's the only one left in the fridge, so I thought I would create a little fun kind of commercial, which I've seen a lot of YouTubers doing recently in this lockdown period. What can we create with this as an advert? It's got some good colours, nice, nice teal and orangey red colour. It's going to really pop. Uh, what we're going to do though is film it on my old faithful electronic lazy Susan. This is such a powerful tool for creating cinematic shots because obviously it's motorized, so you're getting one rotation every minute and it's constant. Um, you're able to then do other camera moves while that's spinning, so it creates a lot of depth and a lot of variety in your shots. And I love it. Best investment of like 40, 50 quid. Uh, I've got another video about this check it out up here let's get the uh, let's get the shot set up uh, and talk you through what I'm doing okay so we need a, a surface to go on the lady Susan and I haven't got much in the way of materials in the house but what I do have is garden furniture that I haven't finished making yet so this little coffee table it came with a glass top and I think that'll be quite cool to use just just in case we see um, any reflections and stuff from the glass. Yeah, it's glass. That'll work. Brilliant. Give that a spray. Make sure there's no smudge marks. Just polish everything on there. And then so in theory, when we rotate this, we'll get a nice reflection if we get that low. Um, but that is the, the theme. Uh, we've got to sort that background out, obviously. Okay, let's do that next. Again, more garden furniture. And there we go. Uh, that is one of the cushions from the garden furniture. And when the camera will become low enough, I don't know if I can show it at this camera like that, but no, uh, it will be perfect, I think. <laughs> well, we'll see. Okay, so I've also added to the side here a negative fill, so another cushion from the garden furniture, uh, as you can see. Yeah, and uh, uh, there's, there's a couple of guinea pigs just, you know, Hanging out, waiting for the beer. Uh, now let's get the proper camera set up so we can see what that actually looks like in frame. We'll probably start with the 100mm macro. This is the lens I use for almost anything product related, food related. So this is the lens to get detail and kind of like the, uh, the teaser shots as it were for the cam. And when the camera is now set up, look at what you can get just Simple as that, and it looks good without even adjusting it. I'm thoroughly impressed that with little to no effort, you've got a cracking establishing shot. And uh, it's only gonna get better from here. We're gonna actually see what it looks like with a bit of uh, mist on it, some spray of the water, and maybe we'll introduce uh, an accent light to help out. Uh, but on the whole, this is looking pretty clean straight away. Okay, as you can see, we've now added a, a background light, which is just one of these Aperture F7 lights. And I've got a bit of blue gel that I've put over it. Put the light then onto uh, its tungsten setting. So what are we on? As you can see, at 3200. 
and that gives a nice teal color background which matches the can and if you look now on screen it's looking pretty beautiful actually you've got the lovely background color uh, the only thing i'm not sure about is we got the uh, this yellow rim down the left edge i don't mind it and i know why it's causing it obviously you can see uh the left edge is not gelled uh, we could cover that with tape um flag it off but equally i'm not sure if i don't mind it now this area i'm keeping it to the a third to the left because i want to put a lot of body copy as if this was an advert um so maybe keep that area free uh also i haven't actually told you uh we're shooting on the 1dx and we're shooting in 4k so we're able to punch in a lot more uh when it comes to doing different angles and stuff uh plus uh, the detail is uh beautiful uh, with this lens combo so the next step would be deciding whether we want to keep the yellow highlight or whether we want to not and then also we're going to add some water drops and that will be shot one let it rotate a few times and boom as you can see i've had to <laughs> use more garden furniture <laughs> more cushions also a playstation 4 is propping up the cushions and that's there because it's broken i'm fixing that today um so we're using three garden cushions the top one is to to try and block any of the glare on the glass from the patio doors and uh the one on the left is a negative fill uh because without it there'll be light bouncing back off of our kitchen walls onto the can so we want to create that nice contrasty light to dark look so i decided to get rid of the yellow part of the the highlight on the left uh, it down a bit. uh just because it was a bit too accidental and is that supposed to be there and by doing that i i've done that by uh diffusing double layer actually um taped to the edge and it's actually created rather than a yellow edge a slight blue highlight which actually suits perfectly time to do the spray just using some tea towels to protect the uh the glass surface so we haven't got to clean that up let's see what we can do so we went a little bit crazy with the water um and it's drenched now uh the original mister broke and i'm using like a a sif window cleaner or something kitchen cleaner nozzle and it comes out a lot more heavy than what was the mist before but the results are looking still pretty good uh, as you see up here uh, just getting some new angles just to kind of help tell a story more and uh, once we piece that all together it should be a, big, a good bit of footage the beauty of these L series lenses doesn't matter if you get them wet And then for the final shot, I think what we can do is uh, the, a hand coming in and grabbing the can and pulling it away. So let's just spray it with a bit more water. Love me some water. Here we go. And that is a wrap. We have finished. Woo! Let's go see what we got on the computer. But first, let's have a sip of this beer. It's been lingering for about an hour now. Mmm. Mmm. Flat. Let's go see what we got on the computer. It's going to be good. Yeah. Okay, so the first thing we do once we've imported all our footage into Premiere is we scrub through the clips and we set our in and out points of the bits that we think are interesting that we think we could use further down the line then when we drag them onto the timeline we are going to scale them down to 50 percent because we shot in 4k and we're only on a, a 2k timeline and then we just go through all of those clips until we end up with a 
a timeline full of the best bits from what we shot. Next thing is we choose a music track that fits the vibe you're going for and start to cut the clips with the music. Add some scale, position, rotation and speed keyframes to elevate your static shots from the norm and then even create some additional extras like I am in Photoshop here, a bit of a title screen uh, which we can mask behind the can and it flies in from left to right. It's just those little details that really make a difference to the final outcome of the film. Uh, yeah, easy as that. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Just goes to show all you need is a little bit of imagination and maybe a little investment in Lazy Susan and you too can create something cool like this. I'll see you in the next video. Subscribe, comment, bell, and uh, yeah, bye for now.